Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And who is ready for another security talk? <laughs> so we're just DDoSing you with all security talks. So you wake up tomorrow like Neo and it's like, I know security. <laughs> so let's get into it. So my name is uh, Jana. Uh, I'm from Brisbane. I started uh, Drupal full-time maybe about five, six years ago when I quit my full-time full -time day job as a React developer um, and just joined the Drupal herd. Um, it's cool so far. Um, and uh, why do we need to talk about security? I think it was been raised so many times today that it's even if we are just doing CMS and it's only public, um, information that's available, um, you still have your reputation on the line and the uh, intruder can insert their code, they can insert their uh, malware, they can put in some malicious uh, forms, for example, with Twitter hack when Elon Musk or Joe Biden or um, even ex-president Obama, they put um, hey, buy my cryptocurrency here, which was um, uh, a hack, which now um, there is a court case in America, $800,000 were stolen from people who said, oh, if Obama says cryptocurrency, I'm going there. So, yeah, protect. And to disclaim my presentation, the cybersecurity is there for on all sorts of levels. We've got um, infrastructure, uh, networking, systems, application, human, we've talked about the human security today as well. Uh, this talk will be focusing on application level security and application level concepts, although they do sometimes interlace. So we've got on uh, systems, we need to have antivirus, but on application security for Drupal, you have to install Clam AV module to enable this virus scanner to run on the files that people upload and your users or content editors upload. So, for the agenda, so what is uh, secure by design? And uh, we'll look at the secure by design project. We'll look at the enhancing development practices quickly, and there will be an action list for you to follow up for the next six months. <laughs> Prepare. Uh, secure by design has been defined in um, American uh, publication. Uh, I'll come back to that publication as uh, security is a core business requirement, not just something that someone comes back with penetration testing and saying, hey, fix all those issues that you can do it later on. Um, so you do it at the design phase um, so that making sure that you follow all the guidelines that in the produced. And the government has been slow in the past, but since we had so many horrible data leaks recently, uh, they've been uh, actually pretty good um, releasing a couple of guidelines recently. So this one is not very recent. This is Australian Cybersecurity Center um, securing your CMS, which is specifically was designed for even uh, GAF CMS uh, installations. Uh, you can find it here. I'm not going to read those. Um, the most recent one and the most interesting one, because this is how Optus got hacked, uh, the guidelines for software development practices. It was released on 2nd of March, which is pretty much after the Optus shenanigans. Um, and to go back to the essential eight, if you search for development, or uh, software engineering or anything in Essential 8 that doesn't deal with the development uh, environment or software engineers, because everyone has software engineers, software developers. So it's more for your users, but they're like, oh, developers, we don't want to deal with them. They're too hard. Let them build their VMs and do whatever, poke holes. <laughs> uh, so this one, the guidelines for software development from Essential 8. And from the Americans, uh, from the United States Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, 
from NSA, FBI, and six countries, including Australia and New Zealand. We've got secure by design, secure by default publication and the whole website. So those are the guidelines that I'm basing this secure by design presentation. Have a look at those um, publications. Also, uh, OWASP, yeah, there's top 10, blah, 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 but there is um, more interesting e uh, publications in OWASP is Web Security Testing Guide, which actually is a huge document of the penetration testing, a guide for the penetration testing. Um, pick and choose those specific items for the developers that uh, you might implement specifically to fix those pen test issues that will come up later and the cheat sheets from our apps. So that's also a lot of different publications that deal with different security topics that you can just follow those um, practices to make sure that your uh, that website will pass the um, penetration test and it's deployed the most secure. So based on all those um, uh, guidelines and all those publications, I created the, let's create a secure by design project. So they say, oh, we need to create the project and let's start from the um, day one. We care about security. We have those guidelines. Let's just put all the tasks based on those guidelines into that secure project. Um, so that into that secure by design, security first project. So I based it on GitLab. That's um, those little, um, um, tasks, uh, they're just screenshots from the GitLab. So all of the guidelines now do SAS tasks. So let's put those into tasks. Also, um, OWASP says you have to have your secret management. It costs money, it costs time, so let's put it into tasks. How do you manage your task? Uh, your uh, secrets, how do you know that developers don't commit those secrets into your GitLab? Maybe you should install a pre-commit hook that checks it. So there is a Git Guardian for that. The, uh, all those tasks, they do the, the, uh, it does take time and money to implement, so it has to be there. It has to be included in your project. Next, we're moving into vulnerability disclosure program. So all of those uh, government publications do talk about it. So I'll go back to the client, say, what's your vulnerability disclosure program? Uh, what's the email? Who's going to be monitoring it? Things like that. In Drupal, we have a um, security TXT module that creates that little file that tells all the hackers, uh, white hat hackers, where to go, who to contact if they found something. Um, GovCMS has this by default in their composer, but they don't implement that for some reason. Um, then next one is HTTP security. So all the there is a specific tests in the pen test talks about the making sure that you run all your TLS uh, certificates, all those um, headers that you need to remove some Drupal headers to make sure that you can't fingerprint your web application. So there is a module for that as well. For the security headers, we have SACIT or CSP. For the uh, fingerprint, it's a remove HTTP headers module. So that's another task to implement to uh, make sure that your Drupal uh, installation will be a bit more secure. Authentication. There is 10 different tests in um, our WASP uh, pen test uh, guide for the authentication. And there is seven different uh, modules you can install on Drupal uh, that are not, co not core modules that you can actually configure and make your authentication um, to harden your authentication to pass the pen test. Um, so try to estimate how long that will take to um, um, implement. It's not just five minutes, obviously. So it needs to be included in the project. And if you have partially decoupled or if you have APIs, that's a new level of complexity, a new level of ways to expose your data real easily. Um, so make sure, let's add the, configure your cores headers, make sure that cores is configured, make sure that you have um, rate limiting on your APIs, 
monitoring and there is 10 different like this API security mega task for all, from OWASP that you need to make sure um, you have you are looking into uh, so for example in this um, API security example uh, uh, that's a um, Drupal partially decoupled somewhere in Australia what's wrong with this picture um, Revision logs message in API to an authenticated user to see. Um, it doesn't have, it's not supposed to be public. So, and this company doesn't have vulnerability disclosure. So, hey, contact, please fix your API. It shows some things that's not supposed to be there. And another uh, level is a production readiness as well. Um, this is uh, a mega task that um, actually um, from the um, both uh, Australian um, publications about the securing the CMS and the guide. And they do specify this, that development, testing, production environments are to be segregated. <laughs> no more cPanel. Um, and they do say that make sure you disable everything that's not supposed to be running on production. There is a module for that, like con config ready, so don't do your modifications on production whatsoever, um, according to the government's um, publication guidelines. Also, you've got hide your public files, like change log, upgrade txt, things like that. They always come out of the penetration testing saying, oh, those files not supposed to be uh, visible, things like that. So you can update and add as many more tasks to the production readiness, production ready um, stage. And this is why this is our secure by design uh, project. So now and nothing has been written. The project hasn't been created. There's probably uh, requirements is still there with BA somewhere. But you already have 15 tasks to think about the security and try to estimate that. So try to estimate how long it will take, like 10 days or 20 days to configure and all those things, depending on complexity of authentication and um, API uh, requirements. Uh, so we'll just put ourselves into security mindset. Uh, we'll estimate the project better. Now we already include extra days for the security and we'll prepare ourselves for the penetration testing. And we are, we'll be better compliant with government guidelines. So the next step is uh, enhancing development practices. So all those publications do talk about using frameworks, templates, um, handling input and uh, output encoding and SQL parameters and things like that. And we can say, oh, we got Symfony and Twig and we know VASP, so we're OK. Um, looking back in the five years of Drupal and uh, contrib modules statistics, uh, they're still there. There's not too many SQL injections. Still, the biggest one is authentication bypass. So that's um, the one that requires more knowledge, deep knowledge into what's happening with your code. Uh, Cross-site scripting is still there. So yeah, we like the first um, keynote today was uh, Laura was saying that we have 30 million developers and 1.2 million developers of new developers coming in into the industry. So they might not know about any of this. They're just fresh devs copying, pasting around things and it's like, oh, it works. Cool. Um, there are easy fixes for XSS, for example. The CDNs like Cloudflare will stop XSS uh, just there. It will say, no, you can't do that. Uh, you can do quickly scans. Um, Drupal has really good documentation on the best practices for tweaks, like using API functions and DB abstraction layers and things like that. Um, but sometimes it's quite hard to fix. Like, for example, this, um, this uh, is an example from uh, Access Bypass from uh, Drupal. Um, 
Drupal security issues. So here we are using Symfony PHP HTTP calls, but you have to have deep knowledge of cache control and all the things you can set in your cache to make sure that this particular um, payload is not being cached on the browser or somewhere on the edge for someone to steal because this payload actually contains API keys. So we can do learn is just look at the um, Drupal security advisory issues, find the actual line or commit that fixed that and see what happened, see how they fixed it, see what was the issue. Uh, in this case, it's just the XSS filter applied on the input. Or in this case, it's a SQL injection, so see how they fixed it. These are all like within a year, this was from 2022. And practice, so pick up a module from a contrib module and compare it to some uh, very well-known module, like for example, Cloudflare versus this module. Um, I'll show the example next. Check how it's configured, how the secret's being managed. Can you um, run configuration? Are there permissions? Are permissions being checked? Are they properly checked? Is there a raw filter on Twig template? Don't, don't do those. Um, and so on and so forth. So for example, Cloudflare, uh, we have a path to admin, uh, configuring the Cloudflare in the admin, and it has a permission, administer Cloudflare. And the module X has a um, path to admin to configure this particular module, and it has permission, access control, uh, access content. Anything wrong here? It's like anyone can access it. <laughs> and action. Well, I have a, um, actually, I thought that was running late, but no. Anyway, and for the action um, next week, if you haven't subscribed to uh, Drupal Security Advisory, uh, subscribe that. There is a lot of other um, there's Symphony security, NPM security, there's Australian um, cyber security, uh, newsletter email that you can subscribe to to know about everything that, that Australian security um, agency wants to notify you. There's a, a New Zealand version as well. Uh, there's American, so just that will just lift your awareness of what's going on. They don't spam, they just usually send those emails once there is um, a moderate or high up vulnerability has been discovered. Um, just uh, go through those publications quickly. The um, guideline for software development, security by default tactics, and security testing guide from OWASP. Um, search your code for raw in Twig. Uh, Drupal Core has three, uh, Drupal Core 10 has three mentions of raw, and it's specifically where it needs to be used. If you're using it, some uh, junior developer can just see it and copy paste it around because it's easy to see what's um, being outputted. It's not a, a whole array, it's just a value um, and that can just go downhill quickly. And uh, run dependencies audit and plan updates or composer audit, see what's, what's happening there. Uh, for the next three months, brush up on your Drupal and PHP secure coding standards and best practices. Um, I've got all the resources available uh, on the last page. And uh, schedule and house security discussions. Um, so with your teammates, um, pick up um, one of the vulnerabilities that were discovered in Drupal in core or in contrib and discuss what happened there because those couple of examples, there were just one-liners, but there are some that have uh, several files that look into how the access has been circumvented and how to prevent that. So it's like a whole new permission level. Um, and also make your project managers, business analysts aware about your 
about how to start the project uh, secure by design project or security first project so that they'll say okay we're estimating this will take three months plus five days or ten days for the security implementation of all those things that um, and maybe even more things uh, from the secure by design project um, and just review your current projects and see where um, you have a gap in the security. Is it authentication, rate limited, limiting of your APIs, or your APIs may be exposing things that um, they're not supposed to be exposing? Like, can you actually test, pass the penetration test right now? For the next six months, dive deep deeply into the OWASP cheat sheets and web security testing guides. Those are, if you are doing GraphQL, they will have uh, lots of GraphQL talks. Uh, there is a security uh, cheat sheet for GraphQL, what to do, how to do it. Uh, if you're doing Laravel, that's there as well. And inputs, SQL injections, authentication, it's a great resource. Um, and then start your next project. Uh, as a secure security first, the secure by design. So put all those um, actionable tasks that um, will actually help you to estimate your project better and um, run your project more secure. Um, in the end, you'll have a better security of the project. Um, and um, try the online security training um, or start a formal uh, certification qualification. There is a Google Cybersecurity Certificate available or Portswigger Web Security Academy or um, uh, Laura as a keynote was uh, representing Secure Stack. Um, also a little uh, school for the security. Uh, you can become a OWASP member, um, and it's only like 50 bucks, and it gives you a secure flag, access to a secure flag um, a portal where you can learn um, protect your flag, or you can capture the flag type of thing, uh, game, and learn how to do the security. So, and these are the resources. That's a little project that I've created. Uh, you're welcome to contribute to it or ask me any questions. This uh, project has all the tasks and all the modules and all the links to all the um, Drupal uh, and PHP and JavaScript best practices and a couple of more examples of core contribution and fixes. Um, of the um, of the security issues, uh, they're just tickets in GitLab issue. Um, I was thinking of just exporting them as CSVs, and then if you are creating a brand new project, you can import whatever. Um, you yeah, yeah, it's that repo. Um, oh, well, that's uh, it's pretty much on like. Whatever is Drupal out of the box doing for the um, default Drupal, you would have to do the same for the decoupled. So you need to make sure that your forms can be um, forged and that the input is validated on the actual when you save it. So yeah, consider the amount of um, uh, of security and estimation additional and especially it's really it's too easy to expose if you are not writing if you're just displaying things it's too easy to expose uh, some fields or some items that are not supposed to be visible to the unauthenticated user so additional testing 100% uh, I hope tomorrow you wake up as a security <laughs> specialist, at least uh, signing up to the um, all the security um, advisories. Is everyone signed up to Drupal Security Advisory? Uh, uh, Symphony Advisory? 
uh, Australian Cybersecurity Center or New Zealand Cybersecurity Center. No, they 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 did send the uh, thing about the log4j, and recent one was about cPanel. <laughs>